Hello everybody, I hope we're all well staying safe. This is part two of my vinyl collection. Got to put my hair down. Here we are. Get all glammed up. It's all greasy though, that's the thing. Oh. I've opened the boxes but I've not seen what's actually in them. So this is going to be new for me. I've had these closed for about two years. The same with the other box I opened for part one. So without further ado, let's go. I'll just stick to the LPs again. Unless they're um, extended singles, you know. Right, what's the first one? <gasps> yeah, so, yeah, some of these are very collectible. So much so, I got these very thick plastic layers, um, covers, to make sure they look, they're looked after. Donna Summer's Love To Love Your Baby album. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely. And I've played this and it plays all throughout. And I really like the fact it's got the original Love To Love Your Baby song on it, which is about 20 minutes long which was very controversial when it came out because it has Donna Summer doing a lot of orgasmic noises, you know. Oh, it's fantastic. It's such heaven and disco and Giorgio Moroder. Bad Girls, yeah, Donna Summer's Bad Girls. A lot of great songs on that one. She works hard for the money. And, oh, is that not on here? Oh, I apologize. No, she works hard for the money, but must be on something else. But yeah, Hot Stuff, of course, Bad Girls. And a lot of great songs on there. And I've got a bit of makeup on today, so I look a bit better. Oh, that's a bit better for you. That's, uh, the previous video I did about, I did it nine o'clock at night, so I didn't look the best, but I really wanted to do a video for you. Is this what I think it is? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yes, it is. This, another collector's edition. I got this for £12. I think it, the website's called Discogs. Discogs. And it's good to find, hard to find stuff on there. This is Donna Summer again, but it's MacArthur Park. The very much extended version. It's about 17 to 20 minutes long. It's fused together with four other, or three other of, of her songs. It's, yeah, it's with One of a Kind, Heaven Knows. Oh, is it just two songs? Oh, excuse me, it's just two songs, but it feels longer. But if you just want to have a good dance, non-stop this is the one it's just so beautiful it's one of my favorite songs and it's one of my favorite extended it's just a masterpiece even though they're fusing different songs together it's the same beat that's why they're doing it you know it's one two three four you know 128 beats per second or whatever it is and yeah special one-sided record it's very 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 rare you get an LP or a record that's one-sided. They always do two sides. So that's why it's also a very special edition. Plus this, oh bag, yes. I think I nicked this from my dad's. I've nicked a couple of things from my dad's. He's got quite a record collection. Obviously, I've done it again. Um, obviously he has a lot of songs I'm not particularly interested in, but it's got a few things I am interested in. It's uh, Bad Girls again, but it's the single that's extended as well. I got this, let's have a look. I got this as a birthday present. And it sounds awful. I'm one of those people who are very frank and honest about if I don't like a present. And that sounds awful, but I say to my mum, would you rather know that I don't like something rather than say, oh, thank you, and be two-faced and then give it to someone else the day after or put it, give it to the charity shop or wrap it up for someone else. You know what I mean? I'd rather just tell her, mum, I'm sorry, I don't like it. But let me give you the money for it or let me go and exchange it or this, that and the other. Uh, this, funnily enough, I said, thank you very much, but this wasn't the one I asked for. The one I asked for was, love to love your baby. But I still cherish this because it's a very special edition uh, remix and mix, which was done by Patrick Cowley, who was a collaborator with Sylvester, who I'm a fan of. Um, he did it, I hope it might be in here, or it might be. I've got an orange box, which has got my very special stuff in it that I want to cherish. Uh, a big vinyl box, which I'll do in another video. But this one, yeah, Patrick Cowley and Sylvester collaborated quite a few times in the early 80s before Patrick Cowley sadly passed away. I've forgotten which year he passed away, I think it was 83 or 82 actually, I think it was 1982. The same year Sylvester's album came out. It's changed name, so it was re-released as Do You Wanna Funk, which is his, one of his most famous songs, Do You Wanna Funk. But at the time, and on the LP, it was released as All I Need. I'm sure it was that, I'll have to double check, but All I Need. And it has a very beautiful artwork on it, beautiful art cover. I'll have to show you if I can find it. 
but yeah, they collaborated a lot. So this is a special edition done by Patrick Cowley. I feel love. Oh, is this who I think it is? Oh yes, Shannon. Bless her heart. I think I got this. Yes, I did get this on eBay. Shannon, for those people who... I like artists as well, let me just explain. I like artists who are a bit more underrated or didn't chart that well. Or were one-hit wonders. That's why I love Dead or Alive, because they did have a few chart successes after You Spin Me Round. But they were not really well known for anything else except You Spin Me Round and they had a lot of great songs. Shannon is mostly well known for Let The Music Play, which is a great song. But I got this album because it was relatively cheap, but it's also got some great dance songs on it. Uh, Prove Me Right is my, probably my favourite off this album, which is the main song. It's very punchy and nasty and, oh, lovely. And she's got a lovely angelic voice as well. Ah, I'm so glad I've got this one. Yes, Sh it's Shannon again. I'm glad I've put them in order in terms of artist. Shannon, Do You Want to Get Away? I remember listening to this album on YouTube and I thought, all of these are pretty fantastic. I'd like to listen to this out loud. Some songs I prefer on speakers out loud because they're just... They sound better than if they're on earphones or earbuds. They just do. And this one is, I like to listen to it with my earphones, but out loud it's gold. It's just, it's, it fills the air with happiness. That's the only way I can explain it. But yeah, Do You Want to Get Away is a very good song. But there's another one, let me just see if, Doing What You're Doing, I like that one. Stronger Together, that's had a few remixes. That's a nice song. Urgent, that's quite a catchy, um, punchy song. There's a lot of really good ones on here. I'm so glad I've got that. Yes, here we are. I think this was her debut album. Shan Shannon again. Let the music play. Uh, her succeeding... Her next song after Let the Music Play was... I think it was Give Me Tonight and it wasn't that successful. It had a very similar sound to Let the Music Play. Uh, Sweet Somebody. I like that one. Sweet Somebody's a nice song. And My Heart's Divided. I like that one. I really like that one. It's a really good album. If I ever did become a DJ, which I won't, but if I did, it would be devoted to 80s dance music. I like the term dance music because it's such an umbrella term. It could mean disco, high energy, techno pop, synth pop, dance. They're all designed to encourage you to dance. Oh, here we are, Princess. I spoke about her in a previous video. Uh, oh, this was her debut album, released and produced by Stock Aiken and Waterman. And of course, ooh, there's some good songs on here. I'll Keep On Loving You. I was talking about that in the previous video. It's a very good song. My, Say I'm Your Number One. That's her most famous song. So she's probably seen as a one-hit wonder as well, which is a shame. I believe she was a backing singer for, oh, I do apologise, I've forgotten their name. Is it The Three Degrees? Uh, a girl, a girl group, The Three Degrees. But yeah, I think she did backing vocals for them a few times before she became a solo artist. And In the Heat of a Passionate Moment, I like that. It's a very catchy song. Very punchy again. Bit of a nasty sound, even though she's got a very heavenly, angelic, soft voice. Beautiful voice. Oh, this is going to take a while. This may take longer than half an hour. I've got a full box here. I've got a full box. Yep, say I'm your number one. Extended version, Princess. Rick Astley. His first album with Stock Aiken and Waterman. Is it Whenever You Need Somebody? Yeah. This was the time where Stock Aiken and Waterman's sound was very much established. Even though they're great songs on here. Every single one sounds so similar. Obviously the most famous one is Never Gonna Give You Up. But Whenever You Need Somebody and Together Forever. I like them both but they sound so similar. Whenever you need somebody, together forever, never gonna give you up. Sounds very similar, doesn't it? Well, just the way I sing it. But you can't knock. People like to, forgive my wording, but like to slag off Stock Aiken and Waterman, but at the end of the day, they're successful for a reason. They knew how to make great pop music. Very infectious, great choruses, great synths, great keyboards, great everything. This is Bananarama's True Confessions. Is it True Confessions? Yes, it is. I believe this is their first album with Stock Aiken and Waterman again. And a lot of great songs on here. They've got a lot of lovely ones here. So yeah, True Confessions, the song itself is very good. Ready or Not is very good. 
A trick of the night, very good. Dance with a stranger, very nice. I like never, I've not got any Kim Wilde albums. I would like to start getting them because I really like Kim Wilde. I've got her on CD, but she did a song called Never Trust a Stranger. Oh, and there's a moment where she goes to a very high note and it's just, oh, it's heaven. Absolutely lovely. And of course, this is famous for having Venus on it. Yep, their version of Venus. And one of my favourite songs is called More Than Physical. But they have so many remixes. I like just the plain single with the nice build up. But in some versions, they go straight into the keyboards and it doesn't have much of a build up. More Than Physical famously also had the same chord structure as um, a 70s song by A Taste of Honey, which was Boogie Oogie Oogie. Do -do -do -do. Anyway, you know what I mean, it has the same chord structure, so there's always influences in different songs as we get on. Um, there's another example actually, I'm trying to think of one. Oh, it'll get to me. You hear it all the time, Pete Burns, again, the lead singer of Dead or Alive, famously um, said that the chord structure in um, the Pet Shop Boys West End Girls is identical to Sylvester's You Make Me Feel Mighty Real. Bit of trivia there. Right, some of these might be a bit crap now because I saw these in a rundown, um, it was mixed shop, but it had records in it. And this, I played this and it does work, but it's very scratched. It's very much scratched, it's cr scratched quite a lot. And it's Dusty Springfield in private when she collaborated with um, the Pet Shop Boys in 1989 for her 1990 album, Reputation, which was seen as a comeback album for her because it charted very well in the UK. This is the Shep Pettibone remix, it's alright, but yeah. Pointer Sisters breakout album, very good. Got uh, Baby Come and Get It, which I talked about in my previous video. Jump, of course, Automatic. Dance Electric, I was fixated with that song for a long time. Neutron Dance. <laughs> Neutron Dance famously was in... What was it called? Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop with Eddie Murphy. Nightline. Telegraph Your Love Operator. Every single song I know, and all of them I really like, a lot. And it's very rare for an album to like every single song, in my opinion. And I'm so excited, the extended version. I've listened to I'm So Excited since I was in high school. And it's one of my favorite songs, always will be. And anything extended with I'm so excited. Call it a day, I'm happy. Can't beat it, you cannot beat it. Oh, I've got another one. Hit that perfect beat. Bronsky beat, very good. Talked about that in my previous video if you're interested. Automatic, Pointer Sisters, extended. Oh. Alison Moyer, that old devil called love. I'm a big fan of Alison Moyer. Oh, very beautiful woman, bless her. She's, I believe she had uh, mental problems. Was it, um, oh, bipolar? I don't know, but obviously she, I think she got really depressed with her weight and how the press kept bullying her about her being a plus size woman. You'd never hear that about men really, do you? I mean, let's think about it. Belinda Carlisle, Heaven is a Place on Earth. Classic. Got a lot of gay anthems in here, haven't I? <laughs> oh, Tina Turner. What's love got to do with it? Exactly, Tina. What's love got to do with it? Oh, I'm so glad I've got this. This, I, I'll always say, I don't think I'll ever say this is my favorite song because I'll learn about new songs, I'll find new things, and I'll find something new and I'll think, well, this is up there with one of my favorites. So I'll usually always say, I try and do my best to watch what I'm saying but I usually say this is one of my favourites and this is one of my favourites, full stop, point blank. Laura Branigan's version of Self Control. It's such a fantastic song. Let me just have a look, because I think I've played it, but I don't know if it's in good quality, actually. Right, I can see. That's fine, it's just thumbprint. Is this side here? Oh no, it's Silent Partners, that's this side. Right, I'm seeing a couple of scratches, but I think it'll work just fine, that one. Famously, the um, video for Self Control was directed by William Friedkin, who directed The Exorcist, The French Connection, a lot of big Hollywood films back in the day. Matthew Wilder, Break My Stride, very good. 
Oh, yes. This was one of the first ones I bought. Phyllis Nelson. Move closer. It is a very cheesy 80s song, but I love it. Again, it's one of those songs I always heard in my dad's car, so I like it. Oh, bless. Mel and Kim. Respectable. I, forgot, I do apologise. It's Mel who passed away, wasn't it, of cancer? And then Kim Appleby did a solo career very briefly. Nothing has been proved, Dusty Springfield. Oh, Jimmy Somerville, oh yeah. His version, Jimmy Somerville, his version of You Make Me Feel Mighty Real by Sylvester. It's very nice actually, but it's not that much different to the original apart from the synths and the 80s sound. Right, this, yeah. Bronsky B, Age of Consent, a very collectible album. A very beautiful album. One of the first bands to be openly gay in a time of unbelievable homophobia at the time of AIDS. And Jimmy Somerville with his voice, his falsetto. It's important to remember albums like this. this. These are the kind of albums we should take more seriously and remember where they came from. And it's, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I wish this album got more recognition. I think it does as the years go on and we're more aware of queer culture, but I always believe that people don't take pop music or high energy or queer sounding music as seriously as rock music, for example, because I don't know, rock is seen as more masculine, therefore more manly. Dusty Springfield Reputation, the song, not the LP. I'll have the LP here somewhere in a minute. Dusty Springfield in private, extended version. Crucified, it is such a funny song, but it's also a very funny video, isn't it? Crucified by Army of Lovers. There we go. Apparently it was a bit of a controversial video as well because the, man, the men were so androgynous. And apparently that they had issue with that, but they didn't have issue with the woman in the band who was showing up, not showing her boobs, but had a lot of cleavage, basically. It was very tongue-in-cheek, the video. It was very funny. All around the world, Lisa Stansfield. I think I stole this from my dad as well. I say my dad, but it's my mum's, really. She was the fan. I got this from my mum as well. Alison Moyer, Alf. Very beautiful album. Oh, the way I ton these things. Did I get this for a pound? Yes, I did. I think I played this and it didn't play that well, but it doesn't matter. Absolutely Fabulous by the Pet Shop Boys for the TV sitcom, Absolutely Fabulous. And it just has snippets of the comic moments in the show. So Sorry I Said, Liza Minnelli. I like this because this was, again, Pet Shop Boys collaboration in 1989. So around the time they were collaborating with Dusty Springfield. Um, a pop album. Liza Minnelli did with Pet Shop Boys, they co-wrote some of the songs and did the sound for her. And it was a very successful album, it went to number six in the UK, as did the main single from it, which was from a musical, Le Cage Du Fall. No, it wasn't, it was Follies, sorry, it was from Follies, called um, Losing My Mind. It's a very good song. Oh, talking of Losing My Mind, here it is. But I think this one is a bit knackered, I'll have to get a new one. Let's have a look. I don't know why, I, oh I didn't buy this, I didn't buy this, a friend, bless him, a friend bought me this. Oh wow, I haven't even heard it yet, but yeah, bless him. I am a Liza fan, but I'm not a die-hard Liza Minnelli fan. Oh, Phil Collins, Another Day in Paradise. Not bad, eh? I think my favourite song from Phil Collins, one of my favourites, is um, Easy Lover, which he did with Phil Bailey. I think it was... In Earth, Wind and Fire. I really like this song. I really like this song. I've gone where I got this. The Power Station, Some Like It Hot. It's a great song. Dusty Springfield, Golden Hits. Mostly from the 60s, of course. I got that quite cheap as well. Right, I'm getting into Dusty, the Queen. I thought she was in my orange box, but she's here as well. So Dusty Springfield, it begins again. This is an album it took me a while to warm to. Until, obviously, I said in my previous video, I really like her 70s work. More so than any other decade. This is a beautiful album. Famously, as well, what I've read, 
because when she works with Chris Lowe and Neil Tennant from the Pet Shop Boys, they both wanted, they both had to choose which song was their favourite of Dusty's. And Neil Tennant went with a more popular, well, more well-known song, which is a beautiful song from the 60s called Going Back, which is again about childhood and nostalgia and having to let all that go when you get older. It's quite a sad song actually, but it's so beautifully interpreted by her voice. But Chris Lowe, who I had a bit of a crush on, I must be honest, when he was younger, ooh, um, famously chose something from this album called I'd Rather Leave While I'm In Love, which is a... It, the title says it all. It's really beautiful. But yeah, nearly every single song is about love on this album. But the ones that stand out for me... Turn Me Around! That was really done previously by her for an unreleased album that still isn't released today called Longing. And that's one of my favourite albums from her. Unfortunately, you can find it on YouTube, so if you're interested, go and check it out. But yeah, Checkmates, that's a fabulous song. That's, to me, the one that stands out the most, fully enough, in all this. It's one of my favourites. Sandra. I think I read this wrong, but I believe it was written by Barry Manilow. I could be wrong about his mother, but I could be completely, utterly wrong. Don't quote me on that, but I remember something about Sandra. That's a very dark song. I mean, it's a full story in that song. It's about a discontented housewife who tries to kill herself because she's just so unhappy. And she's estranged by her husband and the kids have left the nest. And oh, it's so beautiful, but it's so heartbreaking. It's even more heartbreaking because she's singing it. You know, the, the Queen of White Soul. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, that's the kind of love I've got for you. That's the kind of love I've got for you. That's probably her only proper, full-fledged disco song. You know, like proper disco. It's a very good song. I really like this album. Oh, I got this for five pounds. It's spotless. I played it. Judy Garland. I'm such a stereotypical gay answer, but I don't care. Judy Garland, live at Carnegie Hall. Many people say. A lot of show business stuff was invented that night. The idea of fans going crazy. This was before the Beatles. This was before filling arenas. This was before a lot of things. You know, what we expect to do when people go crazy over a star on stage, or a singer, or an artist. After about an hour into this, the audience has left the seats. They're going straight to the stage to wanna, because they want to get close to Judy and because her voice was just so powerful and so emotional and so effective. It was a beautiful night and it's very rare, you, you can think, it's very rare you have an audience begging for more when they've finished, when Judy and her band have finished. She had to do about five more songs after they formally finished. They just wanted more, more, more. And there was quite a few stars in that audience as well from what I remember. There was like Doris Day and Rock Hudson and things like that. But yeah, it was a very famous night. And I'm glad I remembered she was the first woman to win a Grammy Award for Best Album. Now, don't forget that. Jennifer Rush, The Power of Love. Beautiful song, covered by millions of people. Even though she's known as a one-hit wonder, she wrote that song. So whenever somebody covers it, she gets the money for it. That's where the money is. It's not just the singing, it's when you write your own material. Jennifer Rush, the album which has the power of love on it. I like a quite a few songs on this one. Uh, and she wrote everything on here. Ring of Ice is very good. Ring of Ice is very good. Into My Dreams, I like that one. Yeah, those two in particular. Ah yeah, this was from my dad's, but I... Oh, I bought it. Carpenters, the singles from their successful years, 68 to 73. Or 69 to 73, excuse me. But yeah, Rainy Days and Mondays, Superstar. Um, they long to be close to you. Lovely. Oh, this is fun. I've, I've seen a few videos about this song. Starship, we built this city, saying it doesn't make any sense. It probably doesn't, but it's catchy, so who cares? Alison Moyer, Rain Dancing. I think the other song I like on here, or the one I know... Oh, no, I know two. So, Is This Love? Question mark. That's a good song, but Ordinary Girl. I like Ordinary Girl. That's a good song. Ooh, how exciting! 74 to 78? What did they do between 74 and 78? I won't last a day, oh, only yesterday. Solitaire. Ooh, Solitaire by um, Laura Bannigan. 
That's a lovely song. Yeah, there's none that really stand out for me here. Oh, Bonnie Tyler. Right, have I played this? I don't know if it actually is a bit of an... in a bit of a knackered position. Knackered condition. Sorry, I'm a bit sleepy today. Bonnie Tyler. Faster than the speed of night. Very good. Famously, it's got Total Eclipse of the Heart on it. But... Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. This was, yes, produced and directed by Jim Steinman, who did the Meatloaf songs, you know, Bat Out of Hell and all that. So that's why it's got quite a kick to it, because he's obviously in charge of it. It's got that operatic rock, glamorous, high energy, techno, sensational, you know, gargantuan production. It's so funny. Oh, I'm so glad I've got this. Cindy Lauper, she's so unusual. Famously, it's got girls just want to have fun on it. It is quite sad she's only known for... Not only known for that, that's silly. But she's predominantly known for girls just want to have fun. But she has such a big vocal range. I believe I've read somewhere she has like five octaves, which is a huge range vocally. She can go down here, she can go way up there. But yeah, it's got time after time on here as well. But True Colours, that's a lovely song. And she did a version of I Drove All Night, which is one of my favourites, along with um, Roy Orbison. Oh, she's done loads of stuff. Oh, Divine. Oh, it's a medley. Is it a medley? Yes, it's a medley. So I've got I'm So Beautiful, like my T-shirt. And yeah, it's a medley. So it's a mix of four of his songs. Shake it up, walk like a man, you think you're a man. I'm so beautiful, shoot your shot, native love. Some of these were produced by Bobby O, Bobby Orlando. Coincidentally, the Pet Shop Boys originally signed up to be with Bobby O and they did a very brief and early mix of West End Girls with Bobby O and it has a much rougher, less refined sound to it but then they thought, no we don't want to be with Bobby O, we'll do it on our own and they did and it became the song we know today so yeah Chaka Khan, the single, I feel for you Chaka Khan, Chaka Khan, Chaka, Chaka, Chaka Khan it's very hard to, well it is for me anyway, I like it, I like doing that. It's hard to say Chaka Khan without singing it. Bronski Beat Y, explicitly gay, if you listen to the, yeah, contempt in your eyes, I've got the lyrics back here, contempt in your eyes as I turn to kiss his lips, using the proper pronouns there, do you know what I'm saying? It's very explicit but eh, commercially successful. Right, this one is in bad quality, I wish I could get a better one, but it's Banana Rama, The Greatest Hits. But yeah, a lot of great stuff on there. Oh bless them, The Reynolds Girls, does anybody remember The Reynolds Girls? One Hit Wonder, and I mean a One Hit Wonder. They did one song after this and then they retired. And, and that didn't even chart or anything, it didn't even get released properly I don't think. But yeah, I'd rather chat. This was at a time when Stock Aiken and Waterman wanted to prove that they could get any ordinary person off the street and make them stars and make a hit out of them. This went to either number six or number eight. It was one of them. Um, it was definitely in the top ten in the UK. Very successful song. And apparently the song is about just how the DJs refuse to play Stock Aiken and Waterman songs on the radio and Stock Aiken and Waterman's frustration about that. So I found that interesting. So, oh, Evelyn Thomas standing at the crossroads. Yeah, I don't know much about Evelyn Thomas except for High Energy, the song, you know, which I like, but I'm not crazy about it. It was Sylvester's last album before I passed away, Mutual Attraction. Are they stuck together? Here we are. Mutual Attraction. I remember he was promoting this on Joan Rivers, and she famously said, So, what did your parents say when you decided to become a drag queen? And he was furious, well not furious, but he said, I'm not a drag queen, I'm Sylvester. So he tried to separate the distinction that he never identified as a drag queen. He just liked to wear colourful stuff and he liked to wear what he wanted and it didn't have to be gendered. It must have been so frustrating and horrible back in the 80s. But she didn't mean how bad by it, Joan Rivers. I love Joan Rivers. She's so clever. And she said it like it was, which I like. Someone Like You, Living in the City, which was, I believe, a Stevie Wonder song, Summertime. I believe that's quite a... I think it's got something to do with the enslaved summertime. If you listen to the lyrics, I could be completely wrong, 
but I feel like it is. Mutual attraction, talk to me. That, it's the synths again on talk to me. It just, oh, it gives me goosebumps. And again, it's one of those albums that should be played on a vinyl, in my opinion, because the sound is just so much more alive. You can hear every moment and every composition, clearly. You can, of course, on a CD. You can, of course, on an MP3 version. But to appreciate it, to get those big speakers out and have that stereo bass sound and hear songs like this, it makes you feel so good. But yeah, it's a very good album. Go. Sylvester, oh, I'm glad, yeah. Sylvester M1015, yeah. So this was re-released like the other one that was originally called All I Need was released as Do You Wanna Funk because of the lead and successful single from it. This was re-released as Rock The Box on the CD, which I've got over there, because of the lead single. Rock The Box was probably one of my favourite songs for a very, very long time. I had it on a loop. I was just so f fixated with the sound of it. I, f I never heard anything like it. Go and check it out, I mean, it was just... And the music video was why I'm so interested and I'm kind of in love with the idea of the 80s. I'm very grateful I don't live in that time period now for obvious reasons, but it, it looks so intoxicating and euphoric. The lights blazing, the music, the pounding and the pumping of the sound and the shoulder pads and the colour and everybody getting along from all backgrounds and just having a good time. Obviously, it was a music video, so they were just making, you know, making making it up. But I th it looked like a real club to me, that. But it was just so uh, unapologetically gay. We need to praise him for that. This is another Sylvester one, isn't it? Oh, it is, but it's got the wrong um, cover on. I think it's good. I got this in a charity shop. I remember now, it's called Coming Back to Me because I'm looking at it. I got this in a charity shop and I was so shocked. Rock the Box, Sylvester, yeah. I'd never seen him in a charity shop before. And I managed to get this for like a pound or something. But yeah, it's just so good. So good, Rock the Box. Sylvester again, Call Me. All the songs are brilliant on this. Yeah, Trouble in Paradise. I believe that song's about the AIDS epidemic actually, because he was living in San Francisco at the time. So, Trouble in Paradise. One Night Only, that's a cover, but it does a lovely cover. Power of Love is probably one of my favourite songs from Sylvester. Power of Love. It's high energy, pure high energy. And it's just got such good composition. Forgive me, I can't speak. It's got such good composition. And... It's got such good backing vocals as well. He had... He usually had, um, originally had the Weather Girls, especially for Step 2, which had the album Step 2, which had um, You Make Me Feel Mighty Real and Dance Disco Heat. Had um, Isora Rhodes and Martha Wash, who would later become the Weather Girls with It's Raining Men, and they were close friends for a long time. But I believe in this period, he had other women as backing vocals. One of them, I'm trying to remember... Jeannie Tracy, I think her name was. Let me see, it'll say back here. Why don't I have a look? Here we are. Yeah, Jeannie Tracy. Hey, I was right. Jeannie Tracy. I don't know if you can see that. You can see that? Uh huh. Yeah, Jeannie Tracy. She did a song herself called um, Time Bomb, which is quite catchy, and that's high energy as well. I haven't got that now, but yeah, Power of Love is very good. Band of Gold, yeah, Sylvester, his version, very good. Here, yeah. do you remember I was talking about Do You Wanna Funk? Originally, here we are, All I Need, it was called All I Need. This, I got this with two other ones, I think I got it with Power of Love and Rock the Box album, M1050. I got them for about £6 on eBay, all three of them, about five or six pounds each. And the reason I had to get it as a bulk was because this one in particular was bloody hard to find. And it's spotless. So, when it comes to eBay, it's just about the right place and the right time, isn't it? If you can find it. And I'm so chuffed I found this. And look at that. That was my Facebook wallpaper for a very long time. It was so beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, Sylvester, sell my soul. This was in 1980, so this was just a bit after 
the Disco Sucks movement. It has a bit of, of a disco sound to it, but it's more funk. I think everybody was trying to shy away from the pure disco sound. Oh yeah, I found this in Leeds Market, Kirgate Market. I think I spent a bit too much on this. It was like six quid or something stupid. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's in good condition. Oh, I've got two of these. <laughs> I might as well show them at the same time. I'll do that as a thumbnail. Yeah, Sylvester Mighty Real, which is an album sort of compilation. It's got stars on it, which is a lovely disco song. Body Strong, Down, Down, Down. Yeah, ah, I see what they've done here. Makes sense now. This is the UK version of Stars. Originally in America, it was Stars. It had four songs on the album, but all of them were about 10 minutes long, nine minutes, eight minutes long, so it classed as a full album. So four songs times 10 minutes, 40 minutes, so there you go. But what they've done for the UK version is they put the Stars album on here along with his debut album, which I believe was just called Sylvester. So we've got Stars from the Stars album, Body Strong, that's in the Stars album. Down 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 was from his original debut album. You Make Me Feel Mighty Real. Oh, that's from his second album. Oh, excuse me, I'm getting this wrong, huh? Oh, they must have done, right, they've done a mix from the first two albums. I Who Have Nothing, that's from the Stars album. I Need Somebody To Love Tonight, that's definitely from the um, Stars album. It's a lovely song. It's a lovely song. They did a remix, I might have it here somewhere, but they did a remix recently and I had to buy it because it was brand new of I Need Somebody To Love Tonight and it was a lovely version. Over and Over, that's from the, his first album. And Dance Disco Heat, so step two. So it's like a compilation, but the whole Stars album is on here. But yeah, it must be because of copyright or whatever. But yeah, I can't get the Stars original album. And of course, his most well-known album, Step 2, because it's got You Make Me Feel Mighty Real on it. Sylvester. I'll take how long have we been, how long have I been yapping for? Right, Hazel Dean. I'm so glad we got her here. Whatever I do, wherever I go. Her most successful single, along with Who's Foo, no, not Who's Fooling Who. Who's Leaving Who. Who's Leaving Who, and Whatever I Do, Wherever I Go. All, both of them went to number four in the UK, so top five hits. It's a very good song, Stock Aiken and Waterman again. Gave Stock Aiken and Waterman their first top five hit, so they can carry on with their success through the decade. Yes. Manpower, Mikel Brown, the album. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Manpower's a pretty good song. Yeah. This is what I like as well, the high energy, raw sound. It's not perfect. It's a bit rough around the edges, a bit gritty, but it's also just disco. Oh god, I've got another one here. Oh wow, well, here we are. I think, ah, I think because one of them, the needle stuck when I played it, so I bought another one. Yeah. This is the only thing with vinyls, you never know if it's gonna, if it's second hand, you never know if they're gonna work until you buy them. Mikhail Brown again, close to perfection. I hope you're enjoying this guys, it's just me rambling, so put me on the background or something. Yes, again, this is when I was um, going through um, the high energy Mikhail Brown phase. So I've got Record Shack from Record Shack Records, which was Ian Levine's um, record company. And he had quite a few artists with him. So Mikhail Brown, obviously. But then there was quite a few good ones on it. Eartha Kit, Where Is My Man? Evelyn Thomas, High Energy, the, beat, the main one. Break Machine, Street Dance, that's a very catchy song, it's very good. Break Machine again, Mikel Brown, So Many Men, So Little Time, classic. Erlene, uh, I never know how to pronounce her name. Erlene Bentley, I'll say Erlene. The Boys Come to Town, it's all just so gay and fun. Let's have a look, yeah, Emergency. Eartha Kit, I Love Men. Yeah. I've got Eartha Kit's album in here somewhere. But yeah, I've got, that's volume one, I've got volume two. Volume two was a bit more difficult to get. But I, w I was adamant to get this one for some reason. Yeah, because Sylvester was on here. He did a collaboration with Erlene Bentley called Stargazing. It's a very camp, funny song, but I really enjoy it. Nearly done for this part, don't worry guys, we're nearly done. We're getting through it. Right. Here's Aldean again, whatever I do, wherever I go. I wanted this one because I like the album cover. I wish I could get a shirt like that, it's lovely. Look at that, look at the shirt she's wearing. She's got shoulder pads on. She hasn't actually, but the belt and everything, it's just so 80s, isn't it? 
Oh, is this another one? Oh no, it's Hazel Dean searching. I gotta find a man. That went to number eight, I believe. Oh yeah, this is her second album, Hazel Dean's. Um, Always. It's a very good album. This was, She only raised two proper album sales up, Hazel Dean. This was her second one. And it had Who's Leaving Who on it, so it went to number four. But this was the only album that charted. The first one she did, funnily enough, I'll get to that in a minute, because it's next. Um, yeah, this got into the top 40 on the album's chart, but the first one didn't. Yeah, some great songs on this as well. There we go. And this was her first album, Heart First. This is one of my favourites. One of my favourites. I can listen. I listen to this when I'm working out because it's high energy. It's being described as the first full high energy album. It was released in 1984, of course, because that year was the height of High Energy. Um, high Energy by Evelyn Thomas came out that year, Divine's You Think You're a Man came out that year, Hazel Dean's Successes came out in 1984. Mostly High Energy, it was a High Energy year, that one. But the funny thing was, this was Stock Aiken and Waterman's first album they fully produced themselves. And... They had such hits on it. Searchings on here, like I said, that was a top 10 hit. Whatever I do, wherever I go, top 10 hit. And they had Back In My Arms and No Fool For Love, which went to number 41. So they were in the top 50. But they had such big hits on here. This album never charted. It never had that success because Stock Aiken and Waterman and the record company Proto Records coincidentally released Divine's singles in the UK as well, Proto Records. They had no money. They had no money. And Proto Records, I think, went out of production a couple of years later because they just didn't have much success. But she was signed to them exclusively as well, Hazel Dean, at the time. And then later she would do other things. But at the time, she was signed to Proto Records. But because they had no money, they couldn't promote the album properly. Therefore, people didn't know it really existed. And that's why it just fizzled out and it didn't char. Isn't that weird? So I think the singles certainly outsold the album. It's a shame because, oh, they're all, all the songs are great on here. Back in my arms once again. I like that one. Searching, obviously. Break the rules. That's got a bit of guitar rock element to it with the high energy. It's such a great fusion. So glad I thought of the right word then, fusion. You're too good to be true. That is a really funny song. Fun song, not funny, but fun song. Back in my arms. Heart first. Hazel Dean, because I've read some stuff. Hazel Dean wanted that to be a single, but it didn't become a single. Heart First is a lovely song. No Fool for Love, it's a nice song. Harmony is very nice. Devil and You, I like the Devil and You, because I think Hazel Dean co-wrote that one as well. And she said it didn't, it wasn't specifically to a boyfriend or anything like that. It just came to a wonder. The best things come when they just come to you, when you don't think about it too hard. Everything I Need, it's the last song, but it's like a power ballad. And it's beautiful. You know, like something Bonnie Tyler would do. It's really good. We're nearly done, guys. Right, ESP, Extra Sensual Persuasion, Hazel Dean. Very nice. I don't know, the extended one, it goes on forever because it's just hand claps for 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, I'm bored now. But the single's very nice. Yeah, that's just an opinion. Oh, what's this? Barbara Pennington on a crowded street, fan the flame. I don't know why I bought this. I kind of remember it, but I don't remember it that well. Barbara Pennington, yeah. Ah, so glad I got this. This was a job lot on eBay as well. Um, that's the name, it's funny that. This is the name of the record company. It's French, I believe, but it had some great songs on it. The reason I bought it, yeah, was because Pamela Nightingale did a song called I'll Never Fall In Love Again. That is a very powerful, high energy song. Really like it. I'd recommend it. And I discovered some songs on this one as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, Change Your Mind, RAF. That's a pretty good high energy song. Cold Days, Hot Nights. Yeah, Naughty Special, Cold Days, Hot Nights. I like that song. But I discovered in this one one of my favourites by Gloria Gaynor. This was after her disco, Queen of Disco period in the 70s when she had most of her success. She experimented with a bit of synth pop and high energy and there's one here called my love is music and it's i really like it i really like it it's really punchy again 
Oh, we're nearly there. Right, I got this in a charity shop. I love men, the single, not the album. Earth the kit. I like that one. And lastly for this one, yeah, early. Oh god, I've got this one as well. It's amazing what you forget, isn't it? When you've got this much, yeah. Early in Bentley featuring Sylvester stargazing. So yeah, that's the end of part two. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope we're all well. I'm recording this before New Year 2022. So I wish you all a happy new year. And um, yeah, take care guys.